Now I am going to discuss the chapter 1 part A that is introduction to machining. So, the machining comes under manufacturing process. So, first we have to understand what is manufacturing. So, normally the manufacturing process is nothing but just conversion of raw materials into the finished products. Assume that I want to make a 10 mm rod from a raw material of 15 mm rod or 12 mm rod just you have to turn it to the required shape that is called the raw material is 15 mm rod and the finished product is 10 mm rod. So, that is the conversion of the raw material given raw material into a finished product using some energy is nothing but the manufacturing. So, the, this is uh, normally the successful creation of men's material welfare depends mainly on availability of natural resources and exhaustion of human efforts both physical and mental, uh, the development of use of power tools and machine tools. Normally, the third point comes under the manufacturing. So, though the manufacturing can be defined in many ways. Some people manufacturing call it as a production engineering also. Okay. So, manufacturing and production both are synonyms. Okay. So, some textbooks they follow production, some textbooks they follow manufacturing. However, both are the same. Manufacturing is one of the value addition process by which raw materials of low utility and value due to inadequate material properties and poor or irregular size, shape, finish are converted into high utility and valued products with definite dimensions, forms and finish imparting some functional utility. That means, you have a low value material that is called the raw material. So, in order to improve uh, in order to convert into the high value added product you have to make use of the manufacturing process. So, that you can change according to your requirement the shape size and the finish requirement that you are doing and all those things. The progress and prosperity of any nation governed by the judge mainly by the improvement and maintenance of standard of living through the availability or production of ample and quality good services. This means, so manufacturing is one of the source which improves the GDP of any nation. So, the living standard of the people. Okay. So, what is manufacturing? The, now, the manufacturing converts as I told in the earlier slides, you have a raw material, you can see the raw material, normally this is bauxite, this is the raw material. So, this raw material converts to the product. So, the bauxite normally bauxite is used as a ore of aluminum and you can make the uh, body of the car. So, in the in that way you can do this one. Okay. So, another one you can see the gold ore converting into the ornament. So, you are using the external source of energy you can convert uh, the ore into the product. Okay. So, various diversity applications whenever you see the manufacturing, manufacturing is a broad spectrum you can use in the aerospace, you can use in the biomedical, you can use in the construction, you can use in the daily utilities, you can see the biomedical stents are manufactured by advanced machining processes and conventional machining processes and all those things. You can construct the bridges and all those things. This is how the major classification of manufacturing can be four, but there are many more things. So, scope of manufacturing you can see in the marine industry, in the biomedical industry, aviation industry and the astronomy and silicon fabric fabrication and all those things. So, okay. so, there are two approaches in the manufacturing, one is uh, top down approach and the bottom up approach. You, as you can see, so top down up approach, this particular course normally deals with top down approach that is called a subtractive manufacturing, but there are other way of manufacturing that is called a bottom up approach that is additive manufacturing. So, if you take a material or raw material and you do uh, the machining process and all those things where you remove the material as per your requirement and gives the product that is called subtractive manufacturing and if you see 
the if you take the metal powders and construct using 3D printing or selective laser sintering or powder metallurgy and all those things that is called uh, bottom up approach. In the top down approach you take a bigger material assume as I already explained you is uh, assume that I want a 72 mm rod where the raw material is 80 mm. So, you do turning it that means that you have a big material or raw material you are just turning it to the required shape and the chips are your waste as you can see here. In the bottom up approach you take the normally the metal powders as your input and you do the 3D printing or any additive manufacturing. Nowadays uh, people talk about the 3D printing. So, for example, 3D printing you just feed this powder and it will print it to as per your requirement. So, the waste is slightly minimum compared to subtractive manufacturing where I as already told you the chips are in the turning process is a waste and in the uh, subtractive manufacturing this is waste is very high amounts. That is why people are now moving towards uh, bottom up approach where you take the particles and construct the product. The classification of manufacturing process if you see there are variety of uh, manufacturing processes the starting with uh, machining process, forming, joining, casting, powder metallurgy, sheet material processing and finishing. So, many still more are there as the world progresses uh, new materials are coming into the world and uh, people are finding uh, new new manufacturing processes. However, in this particular course we completely deal with machining processes only. Okay. So, importance of machining in the manufacturing first we should know what is its importance and what is its role in the manufacturing arena. Machining process is as I said it is a removal process of excess material it taken one block of material to the required shape you remove the excess material and get the desired shape size what are the surface roughness requirement and the tolerances that is specified by the customer and all those things. So, normally there are uh, two types of machining one is conventional machining and advanced machining. This particular course uh, deals with the conventional machining process uh, where single point cutting tool and multi point cutting tools are used. So, machining deals with wide variety of materials with a close tolerance variety of workpiece materials if the workpiece materials are go on changing the tool materials also go on changing because in the conventional machining process the tool hardness should be much much higher than the workpiece hardness that is why as the world progresses new workpiece materials are coming to counter it to machine those new materials we are continuously researchers are searching for the new cutting tool materials. Okay. The varieties of parts and special geometric features some of the examples are screw threads, round holes or straight wedge surfaces many more are there. The manufacturing is there is no limitation it is having a huge shapes, sizes, features and all those things. Okay. So, the other part of this course also deal with the cutting fluids basically the cutting fluids are used for two purposes one is cooling and lubrication. So, normally this is the basic functions of cutting fluids is lubrication and cooling apart from it if you see in many other applications like drilling it has to drill through the big holes or small holes. So, flushing the chips is also one of the function the additives that are using in the cutting fluid helps in many ways that is corrosion inhibitors used to prevent the corrosion. The lubrication and cooling ability improves the tool life, the thermal deformation of the workpiece and it also helps the tool sharpness to maintain the tool sharpness so that the better surface can be achieved and uh, many more applications of cutting fluids are there. If you see 
the second part or one of the major parts of this course also deal with the cutting fluids in manufacturing. So, whenever you are seeing you may understand or you may get the question that the why cutting fluids are getting that much importance in this course. Okay. So, we are studying machining as well as the machining fluids that is cutting fluids. So, that at the end of this course what will be the best feasible solution for the sustainable machining process. So, we study the machining as well as machining fluids then we find the common solution for the betterment of the humans or the operators or the engineers who are working on the shop floor. So, that we can give the environmental friendly or sustainable manufacturing process. So, if you see the cutting fluids the basic function of the cutting fluids is cooling and uh, lubrication. Okay. So, if you see the main function of the cutting fluids is uh, cooling as well as lubrication. Okay. So, normally cooling is important whenever the temperature generation in the machining is very high that is called uh, one of the examples is high speed machining. So, normally the lubrication is most important in terms of hard machining applications where uh, friction is dominating compared to the temperature. Apart from it the other functions are flushing away chips this is uh, referring to basically the drilling process or reaming process which we study in the upcoming slides about their introduction. So, whenever you do the drilling operation normally so the the chips will be there along with the drill bit. So, you have to flush it out. So, the cutting fluid also helps in flushing away chips. It will have lot of additives like uh, corrosion inhibitors or cro corrosion preventers which will help the workpiece to not corrode after becoming the product. At the same time the cutting fluid uh, reduces the temperature in the machining zone so that the tool life will goes up by maintaining its hardness. So, it also reduces the thermal deformation of the workpiece. If there is a temperature is very high what will happen there is or there may be a chance of workpiece enlarge in micro or nano sizes. So, that the tolerances may go uh, beyond what the operator expects. The better surface finish. So, better surface finish when you will achieve if the my sharpness radius is maintained properly there is a slight difference between nose radius as well as sharpness radius. The nose radius as though if you see a cutting tool normally it will be like this. So, this is called nose radius. Okay. So, it will replace. So, the sharpness radius is nothing but if you think this is one of the primary cutting zone the it will have one rake surface this is the rake surface another one is flank surface this will have a flank surface. The angle made by this cutting edge with respect to the rake as well as the flank surface is nothing but the sharpness radius of that particular cutting edge. So, if the cutting fluid continuously fall on this one what will happen the hardness will remain maintained at the same time the proper cutting will takes place. So, that the surface finish that you achieve on the final product will be better. This is the final product and this is the initial work piece. Okay. But there is big problem with the use of cutting fluids. Basically the cutting fluids are made with the petroleum fluids commonly these petroleum fluids are carbon based. So, it will emit lot of uh, emissions at the same time metal particles whenever you are machining predominantly brittle materials where the particles are entered in the cutting fluid. So, this also causes lot of problem and if you if you see many of the workshops basically this cutting fluid is recirculated again and again whenever you make the cutting fluid basically it will be a mineral oil to impart the cooling nature what will happen they add water. Water is a better cooling property 
fluid and the mineral oil is a good lubricant. So, in order to have the better cooling and lubrication property you will mix it. Whenever you mix it basically if you see in the workshop it will be like a milky color. So, if you recycle it and again and again the basic problem is the chemical cracking takes place at the same time the metal particles also embed and what are the other foreign elements also embed and it will drastically changes from milky white color to light brownish brownish and uh, then slightly blackish. So, it will have its own emissions as well as many problems. Okay. So, this is one of the problems with the cutting fluid itself. Okay. So, bacterial see if you are using for a long period of time recycling again and again what will happen if you do not use proper uh, biocides then what will happen the bacterial and fungal population increases in the cutting fluid. So, these biocides are properly used, but if you use the biocides. So, basically if you do not use the biocides the bacterial and fungal formation many other uh, living organisms will uh, grow on the top of it. If you use the biocides, the biocides also have uh, its own chemical impact. It will also emits lot of uh, harmful gases whenever the cutting fluid falls in the machining region where the temperature is very high. So, corrosion inhibitors normally we are using the corrosion inhibitors for uh, protecting the workpiece from the corrosion, but it also have its negative impacts from the points of emissions. This is about while using the cutting fluid. If you are recycling again and again what at last whenever you want to discard this cutting fluid. So, disposing is also a major problem. If you see there are two ways or many ways are there, but the predominantly there are two ways how the workshop will workshop people will discard one is uh, discarding into the water bodies nearby or just they dig the holes or wells in the premises of the companies and they just dispose it in. So, if you are discarding into the rivers or the water bodies it leads to the water pollution. If you are digging a holes or if you digging a well on the corner of the company some, some wasteland whatever the land that they have if you do what will happen this leads to soil pollution. Water pollution so it may contaminate the the water it also leads to lot of dangerous things of the living organisms that are there in the water bodies. Okay. So, this is about the machining as well as the machining fluids coming to the classification of manufacturing processes. Okay. So, we are studying about the machining however, there are some other processes also that we have to look at. Okay. There are different types if you see type 1 are primarily you can say these are casting, forging, molding and forming. These are the one category of uh, manufacturing processes. You can see this is uh, the metal forming process, this is the casting process and this is also the metal forming process. Okay. So, type 2 which we normally deal in this course is machining and finishing. So, we deal introduction to machining as well as introduction to conventional finishing process also. Okay. So, you can see the machining operation here at the same time you can see the grinding operation here. So, grinding comes under the conventional finishing process. Okay. So, this is what uh, we study in elaborative way in from the point of the introduction to these processes in this course. Apart from this you have we also have the type 3 that is uh, welding, braging and uh, riveting processes. These are the some of the joining types of the manufacturing processes. The type 4 we have another one that is called uh, painting, electro plating or additive manufacturing like uh, 3D printing nowadays these are picking up. Okay. If you see the ships 
normally anti foul coatings are uh, done on the ship surfaces at the other same other uh, the other thing that you can see is electroplating normally electroplating can be done in many products so for example if you see this application before and after the some of the coating processes 3d printing as i already said 3d printing is coming up in a great way where it is a bottom up approach where you assemble or deposit atom by atom or molecule by molecule or material you just do the layer by layer materials okay so this is about the manufacturing however we deal with machining particularly machining and finishing process in this one we are going to see what are the classification of machining how do we do <coughs> machining is a material removal process basically so there are two major varieties one is uh, traditional as well as non traditional that is called advanced machining processes this particular coats we deal with only traditional so we deal with only traditional machining process in the traditional machining processes we have bulk removal processes and finishing processes <coughs> that means in the bulk or the machining processes or the cutting process your main aim is material removal so how much material i am removing is what is the concern here in a finishing process normally your main aim is what is the surface finish that i have achieved here your material removal may not be a criteria but the final product of required quality specified by the customer is majorly important in the finishing processes the turning drilling boring or milling planing gear cutting broaching these are all the processes are mainly comes in the bulk removal grinding is also and uh, nowadays considered to be the bulk removal only because after coming the advanced machining processes this also considered to be the bulk however as per the conventional machining is concerned still we take it as a finishing process lapping polishing or that is nothing but uh, super polishing and some of the advanced machining processes or advanced finishing process like uh, abrasive flow finishing magnetological finishing these are all comes under the loose abrasive particles based finishing process so the machine tool system what is the machine tool system that you can see is how the machining tool normally a customer specify the product so they may give the drawings cad model and they also specify the tolerances surface finish that required and all those things even some people they may also give the machine codes okay so these are all are the one of the inputs and based on their requirements the manufacturing engineer may contact the materials person or if it is in the purview of him he may choose the raw material suitable raw material and he will process so work piece cutting tool material operator machine tool and cutting fluid this are all comes under a system which is called as a manufacturing process to give the final product okay so raw material is fed from here and this will go through a manufacturing process and we get the final product as per the requirement given by the customer okay this is about the system this completely starts from raw material to the manufacturing process to the final product this is a called as a one system okay so in the cutting tools basically we study about two varieties of cutting tools one is single point cutting tool and multi point cutting tool this is uh, simply you can see this is a single point cutting tool normally lathe machine turning operation and all those things operates on a single point cutting tool where only one point is there in a multi point cutting tool you can see there are more than one cutting tool points are there so this is a 
multi point cutting tool where we have more cutting tool okay coming to single point cutting tool based machining process there are variety of the processes however uh, limit we limit to ourselves to some of the basic processes many people when i am teaching the codes to some of the btech people it is one of the basic courses so people whenever i ask commonly before starting of the course itself what is the difference between a machine tool and a cutting tool people with a mechanical basic mechanical knowledge or without the mechanical knowledge they thinks or they think that uh, both may be similar or they say machine tool is nothing but a cutting tool there is some conceptual errors are there among the students so i want to clarify what is the difference between a machine tool and cutting tool the cutting tool is a subset of a machine tool machine tool is nothing but complete machine this is the overview of a lathe if you see this is overview of the lathe machine where this complete machine is called as a machine tool and on the tool post you mount a cutting tool this is nothing but a cutting tool that's why cutting tool is subset of the machine tool this is a part of machine tool okay so that is the difference normally machine tool is made up of cast iron because uh, vibration damping effects and all those things this is where the carbon percentage is high in the cast iron so the carbon also in the form of graphite it will gives the damping effect that's why basically complete lathe if you see this particular portion or this particular portion lathe bed and other things completely made up of the cast iron however if you see the tool tool normally made up of much harder material compared to workpiece material that's why these are all made up of uh, hss carbide diamond so so on okay the basically the common physics whenever we see a single point cutting tool the first process that we come across is turning process this is how you fix the insert there are many other ways also to fix the cutting tool so this is the one of the way and you do the machining operation the normally in the turning operation it is a subtractive machining process where uh, you remove the material this is what the initial diameter is of your workpiece and this is your final diameter okay so machining from capital d to small d that that means is my turning process okay so you are removing the material you can see the chip of the workpiece is removed by the cutting tool so this is a subtractive process where the chips are uh, remaining as a waste okay so there are two cuts if at all i want to remove the material in a bulk that is called rough cut process and if i want uh, the surface finish better surface finish on the workpiece normally you can go for finish cut so in the finish cut basically you will give low feed low depth of cut so that uh, the material removal will be very less or less and the surface finish that is achieved during the process is better okay <coughs> various other operations also can be performed on the lathe process one is straight turning as you have seen in the previous slide that is called straight turning where from capital d to small d that you have achieved that is called a turning process taper turning taper turning is nothing but you will instead of straight turning we can also use the taper turning operation so that uh, for some of the applications 
where your straight turning is not required you can use the uh, taper turning process depend on your application profiling you can generate the profile with a single point cutting tool the required profiles the, the fourth one is external grooving if at all i want a certain groove at certain location of the rod you can generate the particular groove so that is called uh, turning and external grooving the facing facing is one of the common processes that you perform as soon as you start the lathe operation that is called the facing you just remove the waste material or uneven material on the surface like a facing you can also do the face grooving similarly you can generate the groove so form cutting with the form tool you can generate the converse of the surface you can see this is the one of the tool which generates the converse shape okay so this is called cutting tool with the forming boring boring and internal grooving so boring is nothing but enlarging of the existing hole at the same time you can do the internally grooving also this is up to uh, if at all i want to generate the boring normally you, this is done up to boring process previously and here they are generating the groove so internal groove also generating so the other process that you can also perform the drilling operation on the lathe where you can hold the work piece and you can hold the uh, work piece in the head stock and tail stock you can hold the drill then you can give the mo rotary motion to the work piece and you feed with the tail stock so that you can do the drilling operation cutting off after the performing the machining process if i want to cut off the product and separate you can do the cut off operation threading threading is another important process where you generate the different types of threading the commonly v v type of threads that is generated here in this picture knurling knurling is the process that uh, is embossing of diamond cone pattern not only diamond cone pattern many other patterns you can generate on the work piece so that uh, proper gripping and all those things will be help okay other single point cutting tool process is shaping process where the cutting motion is given to the cutting tool and the feed motion is given to the work piece this is the shaping process where uh, uh, it will run on the quick return mechanism because when during the forward stroke the machining takes place and during the return stroke there is no machining so that's why it will come quickly to its original home position Th that's why it is called quick return mechanism okay different uh, types of cutting that you can perform on the shaping is uh, facing on the top you can see you can do the facing on the top facing on the side at the same time you can cut a slot normally this slotting you can use for the fixtures manufacturing you can cut a slot like this and you can do the steps some for uh, some of the guide ways and all those applications you can do the steps also so these are the some of the applications that the shaping process can do other single point cutting tool process similar to shaping is planing however here the difference between shaping and planing is here the feed motion is given to the cutting tool and the work piece is given the cutting motion that is the only difference but shaping normally applicable or it is applied for the small type of work pieces however the planing is for the large work pieces that is the difference here is, is clearly shown that is the shaping and planing shaping cutting motion is given to the tool and feed motion is given to the uh, work piece here the cutting motion is given to the work piece and the feed motion is given to the tool at the same time here large work pieces are machined here the small work pieces are done so that is another 
application of these two processes. Another process which we have already seen in the overview of lathe process that is called boring process. Normally boring process is nothing but the enlarging of the holes. If there is an existing hole, we can enlarge the existing hole that is called the, the boring process. You can see the overview of the boring process is here uh, where it is enlarging the existing hole as per the requirement of the given drawing or the customer. Okay. We will now go to the introduction to the overview to the multipoint cutting tool process. The first multipoint cutting tool is uh, process is drilling process. Drilling process is used to machine a hole with a drill press and drill bit. So, drill press is nothing but complete system of the machine is nothing but the drill press and the drill bit is particularly this portion you can see this is the drill bit where you are using the use as a cutting tool. Normally drill bits will have uh, even number of loads if it is not customized or something if it normally these are uh, uh, even flutes. Now, when if you see the commonly you will have a two flutes so that there is no vibration on the other side and all those things though so that the chips evacuate uniformly from the both flutes. Flutes are nothing but the grooves that are generated or that are there on the drill bit. Okay. So, reaming process, reaming process is uh, to enlarge the existing hole more accurate size and surface quality. Assume that I want to generate a 10 mm hole. In that circumstances normally we first drill a hole and then you do the reaming process as per the requirement that is called that is how the complete hole is done. So, if you do not use the reaming process the small small birds will be there in the machining or the in the drill hole that is why you need to go for the reaming process. Okay. The other process is tapping process. The tapping is normally used for generating the external as well as uh, internal threads. This is nothing but the tap. So, if you see on the small small workshops or sometimes when in the construction sites, the people will be using rotating by putting on a rod or something on a block if they want to do generate the internal threads just they put the tap and they just rotates on it. If at all I want to generate or somebody want to generate the threads on a pipe they will do the external threads. So, just they will put it and they will rotate with the hands. So, this might be commonly you can see on the construction site or the workshops. Okay. So, the tapping process as such you cannot uh, go directly and do direct tap. So, that is nothing but first if I want to generate M10 thread or uh, something first you have to go for the taper type of tap you have to fit this one and you have to rotate by keeping this is 1, this is 2 and this is number 3. Okay. So, first you will go and put number 1 and you just rotate by giving the feed motion to this tab. So, it will partially generate the threading. Then you go with the plug one so that <coughs> it will slightly improve. Then you go for bottoming up so that you can perfectly get the threads. Okay. So, this is uh, sequentially you have to do. So, normally if at all I want and I cannot go directly and do it. You can do it, but the thing is that you may face some difficulties like it may break because of many, many things. So, this is a preferential order where you can go for one first, second, then third. So, that you can get a better internal threads. The other process of multi point cutting tool is one of the famous processes are highly used in the workshop is milling process. There are varieties of milling where you can see the slab milling, face milling and the end milling. So, the other way classification is these are the various cutters for the horizontal 
and there are various cutters for the vertical milling cutters. You can see the horizontal milling process where the arbor, arbor is you can see here the arbor axis is horizontal to the workpiece. That means if this is my workpiece, and this is my arbor this is my arbor you can see here this is the axis and this is also the axis okay so both are parallel to each other whenever the arbor axis arbor is nothing but where the tool is mounted so if these both are parallel so that means that it is horizontal if it is perpendicular what see as the arbor is vertical to the workpiece that means that it is vertical so that is the difference slight difference between horizontal milling and vertical milling you can see here arbor axis uh, this is arbor axis and the workpiece both are parallel here both are perpendicular this is one axis and another one is this axis okay so these are at 90 degrees Okay. That means that this, are, this is called vertical, this is called plane or horizontal milling process. The other milling operations goes straddle milling where you can generate the steps in one go, multiple steps in a single pass. Another one is form milling. If I have a to generate, uh, if I want to generate a certain form, I can make a tool converse of it assume that uh, I want to generate this type of thing what I want to generate is on the tool I have to generate the converse form so that I can do the milling operation and I can take the uh, I can generate the required form on the workpiece slotting another variety is slotting slotting is nothing but if I want to make a slot or uh, to put the keyway Normally, whenever you want to uh, assemble a gear system or something, you need to put a keyway. For that, uh, I have to generate a slot. You can see here a slot is generated. Another one is slitting. Slitting is nothing but the parting off. If I want to make uh, two pieces out of uh, one big thing, you can see this is one and this is two. So, you can do the slitting operation. Normally, the slitting cutters are very thin so that the wastage will be minimum. The broaching is another operation where uh, big holes are generated or machined. So the tool that is used is the broach. This is nothing but the this is nothing but the broach. So varieties of broach shapes are there. You can generate spline, double keyway, hexagon, square round corner, square rectangle cut. Many types of varieties of cuts are there. So you just for this minimum requirement is you should have an existing hole on so that you can put this as an input and you just pull it from other side so that the gradual material removal takes place and it forms the required shape across the hole. So you can see one of the examples here this is the tool that is called broach this is the final product you can see how these things are generated on the final product another important process of multi point cutting tool is uh, grinding process as, as such grinding is an abrasive process however many tools cutting points are there so it also comes in the domain of uh, multi point cutting tool there are varieties of grinding that is called surface grinding where used for flat surfaces you can see one stands for surface grinding form grinding again form is nothing but if i want to generate certain form or certain shape so you can use the form grinding cylindrical grinding cylindrical grinding is to finish the cylindrical uh, work pieces and the centerless grinding if my workpiece is not perfectly circular this is a circular workpiece 
in that circumstances i can go for cylindrical grinding if my workpiece is not perfectly cylindrical assume that this is somewhat elliptical for that purpose you can go for centerless grinding wheel this can be applicable for external as well as internal honing process is one of the conventional finishing process where uh, the finishing is done by the hone this is called the tool that is used is nothing but a hone okay so the this machine normally the reciprocation motion as well as rotary motion will be given to the this hone so that it will go like this and it will come like this okay so while going you are giving a reciprocation motion along with rotary motion it will also rotate so that it will go in a helical path and come in a helical path so that cross hatch patterns will generate on the workpiece the application of this one is in the engine cylinders where you need cross hatch patterns along with the surface finish another and the last application of this uh, subtractive manufacturing or the subtractive process is finishing or polishing you can see some of the finishing is like buffing process where you need to give some shining or remove small small fragments on the workpiece and you can see other way of buffing whenever you go to the car polishing and all those things they will give you shining this is also one way of uh, removing the existing material on top of it and most importantly the polishing processes are lapping process one is the lapping process super finishing process and many more processes are there so you can see here the lapping process is going on this is a automatic lapping process however you can do the hand lapping also apart from it drag finishing you can see the drag finishing operation vibratory bowl feeding processes and belt grinding process many other uh, finishing or the polishing process that are going to be taught in the course so this is about the overview of uh, the various processes that i deal during this course okay so thank you